Alright troops, welcome back to the Dawn's channel. I am the Dawn Father and I'm about to do a reaction to why no one wants to fight the A10 Warthog, the old brrrt. Um, because it's badass, isn't it? It is absolutely devastating. I believe it's got like the front uh, cannon, like chain gun cannon type thing. It fire, can fire HE, armor piercing rounds, whatever you like, whatever tickles your pickle, they'll fire it out of that bad boy. Um, but it is cool to say the least. The link to this original video will be in the description section below. So is our Patreon account if you'd like a personalized video request and shout out, please check that out or simply join the channel as a member and get your request through that way. Right, now this is quite important. As the channel is being hammered with YouTube algorithms right now, all the views are dropping off a cliff really, really badly recently. No matter what content I put out, no matter how, I put, uh, if it's something people like, it's just, it's fell off a cliff. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe like, comment and share and put the bell on because basically if you don't put the bell on you'll miss any future uploads but I've came up, I've not came up with rather, Alicia, a friend of the channel um, private messaged me on Instagram to say look, some YouTubers have a sort of set thing that they get people to write in the comment section because if you comment on videos, that actually furthers the traffic, it attracts the traffic, further, more traffic, sorry, to your channel, increasing your views. So, basically, we're going to go with the channel catchphrase to comment this in the comment section. Also, comment your usual stuff as well on the video. Don't forget to do that. But, for anybody not really bothered about writing anything about the video, Please write either hashtag no more talking, let's go, which is the channel catchphrase, or our channel fundraiser, hashtag veterans battle still rages. So that's hashtag no more talking, let's go, and ha or hashtag battles, or veterans battle still rages. Thanks very much for listening to me on that. I'm going to be on holiday over the next two weeks, so hopefully I'll get some videos up. It might not be to the same sort of volume as you've been used to recently, but I'll try my very best to do that. So, that is everything covered. You know what time it is. No more talking. Let's go. Five reasons why no nation on earth wants to fight the A-10 Warthog in a war. There you go. <laughs> Love the smile on it. Are they? One simply does not mess with the A-10 Thunderbolt and get away with it. Call her the A-10 Thunderbolt, or more affectionately, A-10 Warthog, but the U.S. Air Force Close Air Support Avenger will take a beating and still find a way to shower you with her low-altitude armor-piercing ammo. The A-10 is one of the most revered pieces of equipment that our fighting men and women have at their disposal, and its track record proves it. The 30mm GAU 8A cannon that sits on the front of the A-10 with its barrel protruding from the nose is one of the heaviest automatic cannons ever mounted on an aircraft. Since the pilots are protected by titanium armor, which also protects parts of the flight control system, the A-10 can linger longer in the battle zone in all kinds of conditions including low visibility and darkness. The A-10 Thunderbolt has earned its reputation thanks to the bravery of her pilots and her performance above the battlefield. We're proud to give a little respect back to those who've served our great country and share a few of the reasons why the A-10 Warthog is an aircraft that should never be taken lightly. One, armament. Here's the total count. A 30mm GAU 8A cannon, up to 16,000 pounds of mixed ordnance on eight underwing and three under fuselage pylon stations, 
a 500-pound MK82 and 2,000-pound MK84 series low-high drag <laughs> bombs, incendiary cluster bombs, effects munitions, mine-dispensing munitions, uh, an AGM-65 Maverick, and AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, plus a Gatling gun that's specifically designed to fire high-explosive incendiary and armor-piercing depleted uranium rounds at a rate of 3,900 wow. rounds per minute. That's a serious aircraft with a bad attitude. And you want to shoot at this bad beast? Good luck with that. <laughs> There's nothing surviving that. Two, survivability. The A-10 has a honeycomb panel design that makes up the leading edges of the wing and tail, making them more resistant to battle damage. Interestingly, the front landing gear retracts under the wings while still sticking somewhat out of the fuselage, giving the Warthog a way to touch down with its landing gear up. This aircraft can survive multiple direct hits from armor-piercing and high-explosive projectiles, while its self-sealing fuel cells are protected by internal and external foam. Like in 2003, when Captain Kim Campbell successfully brought her Warthog back from a close air support mission near Baghdad, her 75th Fighter Squadron A-10 was hit by ground fire, taking extensive damage to the starboard vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizer, aft fuselage, and engine. Upon sustaining the hit, the airplane became uncontrollable, rolling left, nose down. After trying several ways to regain control, she engaged the backup mechanical flight control system. The jet responded, and with some help from her wingman, she landed back at her forward base. Wow. Three. Range. Here we go. At around 2,580 miles, the Warthog's flight range could get you from New York City to Los Angeles, California. Thanks to two General Electric TF-34 GE-100 turbofan engines, the aircraft can achieve about 450 miles an hour, or Mach 0.75, making the Thunderbolt fast enough to be ultra-deadly. 4. Support The A-10 Warthog has immeasurable value to our U.S. troops on the ground and plays a critical role in our military strategy in the Middle East and around the world. Arizona Representative Ruben Gallego said, I'm glad we were able to keep this fleet fully operational and I will continue to fight to preserve this aircraft to ensure that the warfighter on the ground gets their air support. The A-10 was specifically designed for close air support missions. Its large and varied ordnance, long loiter time above the battlefield, accurate weapons delivery, and unfriendly field capability are more than well-developed to be at the forefront of the ground forces around it. As the U.S. Air Force says, the low-altitude safety and targeting enhancement upgrade provided computerized weapon aiming equipment, an autopilot, and a ground collision warning system, which includes multi-band communications, global positioning system, and inertial navigation systems, infrared and electronic countermeasures against air-to-air -air and air-to-surface threats. In other words, try to shoot at our ground troops and we will not only shoot back, but unleash hell on you exactly where you stand. What the heck? Bang! Have some! 5. Grit A-10 pilots have night vision capability to conduct missions during any hour after dark. The A-10 was also designed with a fast maintenance turnaround time in mind to keep it on the battlefield. Things like damaged wing skins that can be replaced in the field, the cannon creating so much smoke while it's being fired that it looks like a forest fire, and a Gatling gun that fires rounds the size of beer bottles makes the Warthog deserve its moniker, the Cross of Death. Certainly the most important thing to remember is the pilots who fly these winged wonders and the ground crews that maintain them. Our fighting men and women are the real heroes and the A-10 Thunderbolt is just another tool in the fight for freedom and a tool that works quite well, thank you. Contemporary Air Force F-15 and F-16 pilots like to joke that A-10s don't have instrument panel clocks, they have calendars. 
At the time, the Air Force's high-tech fighter <laughs> faction, which included most of Air Force leadership, considered the twin-engined straight-wing attack airplane an anachronistic dud, unfit to operate in the modern battlefield where it was supposed to kill Russian tanks. Whether you're talking about a sophisticated stealth bomber or flying machine gun, it's never easy to bring a new warplane into being. How the A-10 program survived its first few years is a complicated story. Former A-10 pilot and author Colonel Arden B. Dahl, retired, contends that the Thunderbolt II made it to production by prevailing in two key political battles. Between the maneuverability and the survivability, the A-10 Fleet Fighter Squadron has taken on Operation Enduring Freedom, Desert Storm, and ISIS wherever they may be, making it one of our best weapons in the fight for freedom around the globe. The footage is stunning. Spectacular. Let me tell you son, I love that. A lot of information on it. Um, I didn't want to pause it, I just wanted to play it and watch it through because sometimes uh, I feel when you pause it, um, you don't get the same enjoyment out of watching the video as if you just watched it. The videography in that was fantastic. They've done a great job catching them in full flight. The scenery in the background was breathtaking. But wow, what an aircraft. Look, it's old. They're probably trying to take uh, the mickey out of it and say it's a bit of a relic, you know. <laughs> There's not a lot of technology. You use a calendar, blah, blah, blah. But it stood the test of time. It has stood the test of time, it's been reliable in so many different uh, war zones now, uh, and it's delivered. Um, sometimes you don't need to change something, it just needs more modern upgrades sometimes, and I think that's what they've managed to achieve with that there, as I've said, the, uh, the durability or the survivability, sorry, um, of the aircraft. It's fantastic. You've seen one there where the, I forget her name now, the female aircraft uh, pilot had been gunned pretty badly in Baghdad but managed to, I can't remember what they called it, like the reserve engine booster or something like that there, I can't remember the name, the technical name for it, but they've put the other one on and she's managed to steady it with the help of her co-pilot and get it back in on land. So they've got backup options for in times of um, when the aircraft damaged but what a machine to have above you for air support that is where it really does do the job isn't it the fact that it can fly at such a low altitude and deliver air support to the ground troops is fantastic it can withstand quite a lot of abuse from small arms fire um, RPGs even armor piercing rounds I think they were saying it can handle a little bit of that as well um, because of what it's made from etc but what it can be armed with is breathtaking I love the paintwork that they've got on its side a vicious looking like shark head nearly on the front of it um, <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. Only the Americans would paint something like that on their aircraft. I think it's fantastic. Um, the names that they give things as well, the Warhog, just genius. I love it. I uh, love that so much. But my favourite thing, yes, you wouldn't use it if you want to take out 
um, a bigger target or you want to ground a, a, a building or something where you know that there's an enemy or, 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 or in or they're using a position to fire I you know mortars from or they're firing RPGs out of you want to fire a, a, a missile down in a, a certain compound or a, a, a building etc whatever they have got they're armed to the teeth with all different sort of missiles and stuff like that there but I've got to be honest with you the the cannon the 30mm Gatlin gun and that noise and the cloud of smoke that comes out of it is just erotic <laughs> to use, I just love it, that and you just know somebody is not having a good day that is on the other end of that bad boy, a 30 mil, as they said, um, I've been a gunner, uh, I've done a bit of the gunnery in the Warriors, which is a 30 mil cannon uh, on an armour fighting vehicle, it wasn't a Gatling gun and it wasn't in chain gun form or anything like that, it was just single shot. But you could load a few, you could, I think you could put about six into it and fire one after the other. But you actually have to set them what way you want them. On armour piercing, do you want HG, highly explosive one, um, or just an armour round, whatever. Uh, you set them up for whatever you think that you're possibly going to be coming up against. Um, and whatever round you may need for that. So that's what you load it. But with that there, that is just no nonsense, isn't it? There's that many, the velocity and the volume of 30 mil rounds coming out of that bad boy, it wouldn't matter how often they mixed it up, whoever is on the other end of that is just not going to survive. It's an absolute beast! Love the Warthog, incredible! If you were in a bit of a gunfight and you were being pinned down, surrounded by the enemy, and you're calling in some sort of air support, and don't worry you guys, we're going to be there in two minutes, um, and you know that it's the warthog coming. When you're pulling out something like that out your back pocket, <laughs> you know you're going to win. You're going to win. In more countries than not, you're going to win when you've got that helping you. Uh, incredible. What a machine. And <laughs> I, love, I simply love it. Uh, I don't know. Obviously, as time goes on, the warthog probably will be phased out because it is an older aircraft. However, as I said at the very start of the review, it stood the test of time. It has stood the test of time for what is needed right now, but as conflict evolves, um, the types of warfare evolve that we, we may have to face in the next decades or the next couple of generations that come. Of course, the Warthog will probably be obsolete and they'll have something else that is just truly mind blowing and insane and that is going to make your day not a very good one if you decide to get on the wrong side of the United States of America and her allies. That's all I'll say on that. Don't forget the link to the original video is in the description section below if you want to check it out again. Um, so say a Patreon account if you'd like to get a personalised video request and shout out. Please, please check that out or simply join the channel as a member. And don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, remember the hashtags, hashtag no more talking let's go or hashtag veterans battle still rages if you don't want to actually comment on the video. But all comments are welcome because they all attract traffic more traffic to the channel which helps the views come in which is a massive problem for our channel right now through no fault of our own. I'm trying my best but sometimes it works in your favour when you least expect it and other times when you're trying really hard to put the content out there it falls off a cliff. I don't know why but anyway that's the nature of the beast that is YouTube. Uh, I'm not going to let it get me down but all I can say is uh, or all I can do is encourage you to Please do all those other things and hope that you will uh, do it for us. Thanks very much. Um, well, the A10 Warthog, it's a pass from me. No doubt about it. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. I am the Dawn Fallout, and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.